Welcome back, Invest Info, episode 28. Uh, this week, I wanted to speak on how should we spend our stimulus if you're able to receive the stimulus. And this doesn't just stop at the stimulus, but it were to come into uh, a lump sum of cash, what to do with it. And I like to, I wanted to highlight this video here on GQ Sports have a segment uh, entitled My First Million and it features different athletes and different celebrities um, but Austin Eckler the current running back for the San Diego Chargers um, his really stood out to me because he didn't spend 300000 on car and 200000 on a chain he uh, put the bulk of that investment into real estate. Um, his mother um, knows a few brokers and he, now he has a couple um, places open in Colorado for rent. And if you watch the segment 30 for 30 broke, you'll find that most athletes that run into this money, um, they come from a background where they had not really used to having large amounts of cash or even just to manage uh, their income from a middle from a middle class perspective. So when they run into this cash, um, or you know their signing bonuses, they 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 have not much discretion how they use their money. But Austin Eckler, when you watch it, you watch this video. Forty thousand for his mom's truck. Thirty thousand for a Chrysler. By the way, he bought this Chrysler used. So that's another thing. You. He has the mindset. He didn't let the million dollar cloud his judgment into now to thinking now is his time to start living lavish. Um, he actually uh, valued this money and he understands one thing. You're in a business that is temporary, just like all our jobs are temporary. Um, and you want to secure uh, a steady source of continual income. Um, so with that... Um, a lot of Americans should be getting a $600 stimulus. Um, the the government is hoping in doing so it will raise inflation because for the past few years, inflation rates have been going down. Um, and the printing of more money is creating actually a deflationary effect as to where there's more money in circulation, but GDP is going down. Yet, um, price inflation is still going up. So... Or the hidden taxes, some call it. Um, some leaders suggest stimulus. And uh, recently, when Donald Trump was president, he suggested the idea of lowering taxes, which that worked really well. In, in order to get um, more money flowing in the economy. What's, what's been happening is, when you do these stimulus, it's sort of going right back into the creditors. Most Americans, especially now with the lockdown situation, when they get this money, they're going to have to pay off bills. Uh, so there's no real money velocity going on. There's no real money velocity going on, which that determines inflation like you had uh, in the 90s. Um, so instead, investors are putting their money with these lower uh, interest rates. The, the Fed plans to keep these low for the next two years. Into riskier assets, just as stocks, real estates, and even more recently, crypto. Uh, we see the rise in cryptocurrency. So, a lot of asset inflation going on. But as as a part of the title, we speak about desert, diversifying our money. So, you got your $600. You have bills to pay. You have things you might want. And you want to get a guaranteed return on that $600. Well, I'll tell you what. If you're paying any sort of interest on a loan or debt, um, the moment you pay that early, you just got a return on your money. So if you're paying uh, 10%, 5% on a credit card or, or you know, 10% on a loan, you know, you pay that loan off, you just gain 10% guaranteed. Uh, that's one way to look at it. Mark Cuban always takes that approach of um, paying off your debt as soon as possible. Uh, some others leverage debt, um, which... You could you could do that approach too. So, I, I, you know, again, not a financial advisor, but let's use Austin Eckler's idea. 
right? He used his million and he put a bulk of that into real estate. So if we have a certain amount of cash coming, we want to put a, a certain amount of that into some sort of asset, whether it's stocks, well, I wouldn't say bonds right now. And um, I don't think you're going to get any real estate for 600 bucks. So we're going to go in the stock market. <clears throat> and when we go in the stock market, uh, we want to put our money in something with a high degree of certainty that we're going to get a return on our investment. And that return doesn't have to be right away, but we just want to make sure we're getting a return on our investment. And how do we guarantee that we're making a return on our investment? One, we look for stocks that are cheap, trading at a margin of safety price relatively cheap to its value dividends would be ideal because then we're getting paid to wait as it returns to its intrinsic value all right so that's that's one thing i'd recommend i wouldn't put all of my money um i'll definitely recommend you know paying interest bills because certain um that uh doesn't have uh interest on it um certain companies will allow you two years free Three years free uh, before they start charging interest. So you could you could hold off on those. But the things that carry interest, I recommend definitely attacking those. They did a study to where, um, you know, which one will clear you out of debt faster, paying off the most expensive loan or paying off the one with the most interest. And when you pay off your interest, uh, when you pay off your loans with the most interest first, you'll pay off um, your total debt balance even faster. The ultimate goal is um, have passive revenue, passive stream, and what that will do is help us pay off our debt faster, and we have to continue to add to our positions in whatever investment we have. We can't just put money and just have it sit there. No, you have to continually add to it and let it grow, and this all takes time. So one, when we get, if we get uh, a, a, a chunk of cash, we have to diversify it. That's one. Two, we have to put in some type of asset that's going to uh, garner us return on our investment. And three, pay yourself. Whether it's a form of attacking one of these high interest loan obligations that we might have. Or taking the money into some type of um, situation that we love. Uh, for instance... Um, Austin Eckler, he loves to play video games. He has a Twitch account. And there, there you could pay to watch him play video games. So he's enjoying himself playing video games and getting paid for it. So, I mean, I really commend this guy for the way he's thinking. Um, and just putting out a different uh, sort of mentality of, on, on how to spend money, not to be reckless. Um, and in speaking with diversification, when it comes to stocks and that diversifying, you don't want to over diversify. So I'm going to I'm going to close out with this point. Um, you know, Warren and Charlie Munger always say, you know, people um, that over diversify just don't know what they're doing. And the best way I could complain, compare it is to what they're saying is to something like religion. Right. If you have an individual that believes in many different things, um you would say that person is not certain really what he believes because he believes this religion, that religion, even though they are contra contrary with each other, he still believe he just he just he just knows that there's a, a higher power and he's just trying to pick one in hopes that one of those picks are right. And one could say, look, this person is not certain of himself. And it's the same thing that sort of goes with over diversifying. You just pick in stocks, you don't really know what you're buying, you just think it's gonna go up. But we're not in the business of that. We do diversify, but no more than six stocks. Uh, personally, me speaking, um, going under the approach of Buffett and Warren, because you don't really need that much stocks to get rich. Plus, you got to think about it like this. Is it easier to manage five companies or 25 companies? It's much easier to manage five. You can know the employees and what's going on in the business when you have fewer companies. So that's really the approach. It's the same thing with owning these stocks. It's parts of businesses. So get a few businesses that you understand. Diversify well. And I hope this was helpful.